What's up, everybody? Happy Sunday. I'm just here to provide you value. It's been a minute. It's probably been, um, it's probably been, it's been a while since I've done one of these. I want to say it's been maybe three weeks since I've done a live, you know, but I'm here to, I'm here to provide you value. That's the name of the game. So any questions, Amazon related, business related, hit me with them. This is the, uh, this is the weekend hustle, you know, talk to the community, let them know what's up. Let them know that I'm still in the grind every day because selling on Amazon is what I do for a living. Do you operate one account or multiple? We get this question a lot. Who asked that question? That was Ecom Demund. Ecom Demund. Um, we operate one account, Uno account for us. That's what we've always done. That's how we do it. We prefer to operate one account. Um, if you see on the previous post that we posted this morning, um, that's actually our seller feedback account. So that is our Amazon account. That's how many seller feedback we have. I forgot what it was. I think it was, I want to say a hundred and maybe 25,000, 35,000. I don't remember off the top of my head, but, um, it's up there. It's definitely up there. And the reason why we operate one account is because listen, you can very well have two, three accounts. And Amazon now even allows multiple accounts. But the way I see it is if I'm going to sell a lot of inventory, I want all that feedback under one Amazon account so I can grow a massive Amazon business. Because what grows a massive Amazon business, like the post I posted this morning, is feedback. Not only when brands see that you're a huge seller, you have a lot of feedback, do they trust you more? But also the end consumer, the customer who you're selling your products to, when they see you have a lot of customer feedback, they trust you more. So let's say hypothetical situation, there's us with 125,000 reviews on a listing and two other sellers with a couple thousand reviews. Um, we could even be priced higher on that listing and still beat and win the buy box over those other two sellers because we have more customer feedback. We're a more trusted seller. And I know me personally, I shop on, I just bought something on Amazon today. I bought a space heater and I looked at the sellers and I ended up paying a couple dollars more because the seller who was selling it for a couple dollars more was more of a trusted seller. So I'm, I'm always down to go with a more of a trusted seller. And that's just, that's just how I operate. You're the best distributors. <laughs> no. Um, no, I'm not giving you the best distributors. Come on, that's crazy. You got to put in that work, my friend. You got to find them yourself. They're out there, though. I promise you that. One of the most, and we posted a dope YouTube video maybe a month ago about one of the seven different methods or eight different methods that we use to find distributors. There's a lot of different methods. And the one we posted about was essentially reverse engineering a product. So you find a good product to sell. Then you Google that product and you look who's selling that product. If you could purchase it directly from the brand or if you could purchase it directly from a wholesaler or distributor. And that's one of the seven methods that we teach all of our students in eSellers RI about. And those, that's one of the seven methods that we actually use on a day to day basis in our Amazon business to grow our Amazon account because they work. They're tried and true. And it's really, it's all about, it's a numbers game. A lot of Amazon is a numbers game and it's a patience game and it's a willing to put in the work game because the more you go at it, the more you drive at it, the more accounts you'll open and then the more profitable products you'll be able to sell and sort. This video is sponsored by Varaship. What Varaship does is offer a completely free service. No fee to sign up. Pretty amazing. And they search for money that Amazon owes you. Amazon makes a lot of mistakes in their fulfillment centers. They lose inventory. They miscalculate shipping fees. They may miss out on a return or two, and they owe you money for that. What Varaship does is connects your Amazon account to their services, and they submit cases on a daily basis to get you money back that Amazon owes you. It's a completely free service to sign up. The link is in the description. Check it out. Most sellers that use Varaship get back thousands of dollars a month in inventory costs that Amazon has lost. So you definitely want to be using this service if you're an Amazon seller. So check out Varaship. How do you deal with incompetent employees or when they start slacking? Um, so we have pretty pretty straightforward rules when it comes to employees. Um, usually we have a conversation with them the first time. Let's say someone's slacking on the job. They're dragging their feet or they're showing up late frequently. We give them a warning, verbal warning first time. Second time it's a write-up. 
Third time they're gone. It's that simple. We operate a business. You know, and obviously with the third time, there's always some leniency depending on how long they've been with us. If they've been with us multiple years, we get it. People have life problems. You know, people have family issues. We understand that. And we have an open door policy at our workplace where the employees know they can come into my office, Sebastian's office, Ted's office, and talk to us openly about what's going on because we understand and we support them and we're part of their family and they're part of ours. Um, so there's that third, that, that second write up, which is the third, um, incident. There's some leniency with there, depending on, on how long they've been working for us. But if they're a new employee and they're dragging their feet, they're gone, you know, without even that first write up. They're just getting that, like, listen, you've been here for four days and you're dragging your feet. This isn't a good fit for you. Um, when you're a business owner, it's, it's important not to get your emotions too tied into your business um, because business is business at the end of the day business is business we're in business to make money you're in business to make money so if someone's slacking at the workplace it may be time to either give them a write-up so it's on paper and it's documented and then if it happens again you have that documentation to bring to them and be like listen we talked about this i gave you a verbal warning and then i gave you this written write-up and now it's happening again. I, I, we're going to have to let you go. And then obviously you give them a chance to talk. Maybe there's some extenuating uh, circumstances. And then you make a decision from there. When did you start looking to get loans for business funding? How would you handle being unable to get a business loan but have 40K capital? 40K capital is a nice chunk of change, my friend. Um, that is a nice chunk of change. You could flip that six, seven times in the next two or three months, three or four months, and, and double that 40K to 80K. Um, but in the beginning, when we started looking for loans, we didn't really get our first, I think our first loan was Amazon Lending. So our first loan was Amazon Lending. Um, it was like maybe 11 or 12% loan and, you know, we paid it back. They gave us a bigger one. We paid it back. They gave us a bigger one. And before we knew it, we were getting million dollar loans from Amazon. But early on for the first three years, two and a half to three years, we didn't take out any loans. We just leveraged credit cards. Every single month, we'd max out our credit cards, pay it back, max out our credit cards, pay it back. We used the plum card. We had some other credit cards and we just consistently maxed out those credit cards and did that over and over and over again until we not only grew a great line of credit because we were consistently purchasing inventory and paying it back, but also we were able to build relationships with wholesalers and distributors. And then we leveraged that credit line into net terms. And for anybody who doesn't know what net terms is, net terms is essentially a free no interest loan from a company, from a wholesaler distributor, where they say, hey, I trust you enough where I'll give you $20,000 worth of inventory and you don't have to pay for it for 30 days. And why is net terms so amazing in the Amazon industry? Because you can literally start selling their inventory and making money off the inventory that they loaned you, the $20,000 of inventory they loaned you for 30 days before you have to pay them back. So let's say today you order $20,000 worth of inventory. It comes to your warehouse, you process it, you ship it to Amazon, you start selling it in let's say 10 days, right? And then you start making money and now you're gonna get some of that sales revenue in your next Amazon check. So you're able to take that Amazon check and pay back the distributor within their 30 day net terms with the money that you made off their inventory. Um, so for us, it went leverage credit cards, leverage net terms, leverage Amazon lending, and now we have an SBA loan, which is a, a, a business loan backed by the government. Thoughts on Amazon automation? It is a, is it a scam? Yeah, so listen, there's a lot of, you know, I see a ton of ads, I'm, I'm in Facebook and, and these groups all the time, and I see a ton of ads for Facebook automation. I'm yet to meet one person, I'm yet to, and I meet a lot of Amazon sellers. I'm talking, I've traveled the country, met, met with dozens, hundreds of Amazon sellers in person. I, I literally have hundreds of Amazon sellers message me every week, and I'm yet to meet one person who has seen success with Amazon automation. So does that mean it's not possible? Does that one person exist somewhere out there in the world? Probably. Probably they exist. Have I met them yet? I have not. So when it comes to is Amazon automation a scam? 
I usually don't believe things until I see it with my own eyes, and I'm yet to see any success with Amazon Automation with my own personal eyes. And if anybody has anything different, please just put in the comments. I'd love to hear your success story with Amazon Automation. The thing that gets me with these automation companies is they sell you this dream, right? It's an expensive dream, too. It's about $35,000. Um, and then they tell you, like, um, if we don't make your money back in two years, we'll refund you your money. It's like... Yeah, two years? I gotta wait two years to even just get my investment back? You're better off putting that 35K into your own business and, and growing it organically. You give, a, an Amazon seller comes to me with $35,000 and they'll triple, quadruple that in a year with the things that we teach them. It's like, or you could put it into automation and possibly just maybe you'll get your money back in two years. Just get it back. Nothing on top yet, just get it back. Uh, what category would I recommend for private label? No specific category, I wouldn't say go and do you know sports and outdoor or tools and home improvement because you could be missing out on an opportunity in another category. Um, one category that I know is kind of tough to get into is beauty. Um, and that's only, it's more in the topicals range, and that's only because you need all these certifications and registrations. Um, so that could be a little challenging to get into, but as far as private label, I would say do your research and then let your research decide what category you're gonna get into. How long does it take to start withdrawing profit? That's really up to you. Um, I know for the first year, we didn't take out any profit. For the first year, other than just putting gas in the car, putting some grocery on the table, um, you know, we weren't putting any money back into the bank account, our private bank account. Sebastian was reinvesting it all back into the business. So that decision is really up to you. But, you know, you should start paying yourself by year two. You should start if this is going to be your full time hustle and you quit your full time job, you should start paying yourself in year two. And the way that looks for us and it really should look for you is is a yearly salary. You should pay yourself, analyze your numbers um, at the end of the year, say this year is about to be over. 2020, analyze your profits and your sales and everything, your expenses, and then pick a salary number to pay yourself next year, whether it's 120,000, it's 60,000, 200,000, whatever, 40,000, whatever that number is, pick it and then stick to it. And then if your business does really good, you take a bonus out. When sourcing a product, what are your KPIs? How often do you compare? compete against Amazon or do you look for products when Amazon is not competing? So what we're looking for on a product is healthy profit margins, um, preferably above 10% gross margin and above a couple bucks in profit. Um, we're also looking for competitive sellers that have not crazy high inventory. So I'm not looking, let's say the listing's moving 600 a month and one of the sellers has 4,000 units. I'm not really going to, I'm not interested in getting in on that listing because that means that seller has whatever incentive necessary to drop the price. Dude's got 4,000 units or chick's got 4,000 units. She doesn't want to sit on them. He doesn't want to sit on them for eight months. So they have a very high probability of dropping their price and tanking that listing because their inventory supports it. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. And when it comes to Amazon, we probably do close to $2 million in sales annually on listings that Amazon sells on because there's a lot of money to be made. You just have to understand how to analyze these Keepa charts that Amazon sells on. You just got to take a look at them. If Is Amazon consistently listed higher than the buy box? Or when they're at the same price as the buy box, are they giving it up? Are they letting other sellers jump in it? And if all those things check off, check, 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 then I'm ready to ride on that Amazon listing. Or sometimes they only sell certain times of the year. That's something you can check historically on the Keepa chart as well. Been growing the biz, 16 months, 1.7 million solo, question, that's huge, my friend. Georgios Raw, that's huge. Listen to this, everybody. Homeboy started, what, 16 months ago, Giorgio started, and he did $1.75 million in sales. 
right? Let's just say at a 7% profit margin. That's 300, or I mean a seven. Let's just say at a 20% profit margin. That's $340,000 in gross profits. Now let's just say half of that is net profits. What is that? One five plus that's seven. So that's another three fives. So that's, that's like one, one eight five. That's crazy. That's 185,000 in net profits homeboy generated in the past 16 months. <sighs> that's crazy. Divide that by 16, multiply it by 12. You're looking at $150,000 a year in gross profit or net profits, net profits. That's most, that's more than most people get paid their entire life for, for an annual salary. To get to your question, Giorgio, congratulations on your sales. I'm finally hiring. Don't know how to determine how much to pay the employees. Any ideas? Yeah, so your warehouse workers, they would start off, it depends what really state you live in, but it, actually it doesn't depend on what state you live in. It just depends on what state you live in up here, your state of mind. You never wanna be paying minimum wage. Your minimum wage, A, nobody can live off minimum wage. B, you're not gonna get good employees at minimum wage. You're gonna get people who don't care about your product. So warehouse workers, they should be starting 11 to $12 an hour based on experience. Experience, maybe even higher if they're really experienced. If they have experience working in a warehouse, you can bump them up to 13. And then if they're a warehouse manager, you want to start them higher. So 18, 19, maybe even 20, depending on how many people they're managing. Now, buyers um, should not be uh, an hourly rate. They need to be a salary rate with incentives for bonus. So you could start, let's just say hypothetically, you could start your, you're at $1.7 million a year. So let's say you get a brand new inexperienced buyer because a buyer is not someone you could just go on LinkedIn or, or Indeed or monster.com and say, type up, Hey, I need a, I need a buyer to purchase my Amazon products and 50 people respond with their resumes like, oh, I used to do that. I used to do that because nobody's fucking done that. Nobody's nobody's bought products for a large company like yours to sell on Amazon because that job doesn't exist. You have to create that position and then train that position. So let's say you find someone brand new, straight off the straight off the street, no experience. You start them off $35,000 a year with, with incentives for bonuses where they can make an additional up to $20,000, $30,000 thousand dollars in bonuses if they put in the work and grow your Amazon business they will grow their pockets it gives them incentive to grow yeah what's the what's that that's a good question Levi what's the position you're specifically looking to hire I just gave you a rundown of the two main positions you need in a business number one most important position is your buyer and number two most important position is your packer because if you're not buying products a packer doesn't exist and if you're not packing products your buyer's bringing in inventory just to sit around and nobody wants to have inventory sitting around. Amazon only brings the price down to match. They never bring the price up. Yeah, once in a while you'll see it. It's not common, but that's, I would agree with that. They do though sometimes. Um, Giorgio's AMZ automation is a scam. Just a matter of time before it all falls apart. Matter of time before account gets shut down, yeah. Honestly, some of these, some of these ads I'd like to see, I'd like to see charges brought against these people. I've literally talked to multiple people who've been scammed by the same person out of tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars. Multiple people by one person. That is terrible. That is just bad juju to be putting out there in the world. That's terrible. Like what type of person wants to do that? How could you put your head on the pillow at night knowing that you're taking tens of thousands of dollars from people? Somebody has to do the sourcing always, and if they do do the sourcing for you, they are making your, they are making you competitor with their other clients. Same products to all clients. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a virtual assistant, Georgios. Uh, this is why we do not use virtual assistants to buy our inventory. Because like you said, I, do, do I own that virtual assistant? Is that virtual assistant solely my virtual assistant? Are they signing some sort of document that this, they says they, they will only work for me? They will only purchase inventory for me? Or are they sourcing for other companies as well? Are they, you know, cross referencing supplier lists between the companies that they're working with so they could possibly get a raise with somebody else? We only hire in-house buyers and they've been working phenomenal for us. We have one buyer. She's a powerhouse.
powerhouse. She accounts right now for over 40% of the profit our company generates. One buyer. Uh, C. Blunt said, what do you recommend? Where do you recommend getting bulk boxes and bags from? But I would Google local box distributors, cardboard distributors, poly bag distributors in your area and build a relationship. There's probably a guy a couple miles from where you're located who's selling thousands of boxes a week and you just don't know he exists yet we got the ill plug on boxes the same boxes that most people buy the large boxes that most people buy at home depot for like a dollar 25 we get those for like 80 cents so like that's a huge savings that's 45 cents for every box and we ship hundreds of boxes probably thousands of boxes a week so we're talking a lot of savings and money thousands of dollars a week in savings um this is braxton mccart said how much does one SKU have to sell a month for you to keep reordering like 30 sales a month or more um so one thing we don't only consider is and this try to open up your mind a little bit here because when you're just looking at sales you're not looking at the full picture because a product that sells let's say you sold last month 600 units of them but you're only making a dollar 25 maybe it's not the greatest product but a product you sold let's say 15 of them which is half of 30 but you're making eleven dollars that's a that's a reasonable product i don't mind keeping that on so the less that a product sells the more money it has to make for us because that it's just how it makes sense and how it it's how it keeps our average profit per ASIN high if it's selling less units I want to be making more money on it if it's selling more units I don't care how much I'm making because I'm selling a lot of units um, but you need to also have a threshold of how low you want to go so Kaiser I just touched on this earlier to ungate for wholesale uh, FBA, you would submit an invoice from a wholesaler distributor. You know, we go over this thoroughly in our eSellers RI course, and we've had literally probably close to a dozen sellers in the past two or three months, um, you know, invest in inventory just to break even on it to get on gated in categories, and now they're selling thousands of dollars a month in those categories honestly i feel like sales went back to the way it used to be i feel like the sales really unexploded through february till june you're i i couldn't disagree more levi our sales let me pull up amazon real quick while i'm here and we have done a hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in sales um today today we have 11,633 open orders. So it really depends what you sell. You know, obviously if you sell patio and outdoor, you're not gonna be crushing it right now. But if you sell in those major categories that people need and people are buying every day, like health and household, personal care, grocery, you're gonna be fucking crushing it. How much do I have to put in to pay myself $1,200 a month for self? Damn, now you want me to do all these math problems? Um, how much would you need to put in? Well, let's just say how much you'd need to sell. So let's say, let's say 20 per, let's just go with the standard, right? 20% profit margin. And we'll say eight of that is net profit. So in order for you, what would that be? That would be 2,800 times. Yeah. So you would need to do about $2,800 a month in profits to net $1,200 a month. So so then we do 2,800 times five. So about $14,000 in sales, you know, let's just say $15,000 in sales and you could bring home $1,200 a month in, in gross or in net profits easily, easily. $15,000 in sales and for us, out of our sales, 40% is cost of goods. So let's just say 15,000, we'll do 15 times 0.4. So $6,000 investment, $6,000 investment in inventory could bring you $1,200 a month. And that's low ball in it, my friend. $1,200 a month, that's like, that's like the, the, just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more under that. Or you can go. Um, I need products for Amazon. Why is it so hard to get products for Amazon nowadays? I just think you're looking in the wrong places. I think it's easier than ever to get products for Amazon. And this isn't just because we're, we're big sellers. This is just because you got to put in the work. 
course it's going to be hard. If it was, let's put it this way. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And, and, and people wouldn't be selling courses about it. And, and I wouldn't be talking to you about it. And I wouldn't have a whole social media account about it. Cause just everybody would be doing it. There'd be no, it would just be like everybody could do it. And, but if everybody did it, it wouldn't be so profitable. So it has to be, there has to be that gate that keeps the people who are unwilling to achieve greatness, who are unwilling to push forward when adversity strikes, who are unwilling to put in that extra effort. There has to be that gate there to keep those people out and allow those people who are willing to put in the work to come through so they can succeed. So my answer to your question would be, I don't even think it was a question, it was more of a statement. My answer to your statement would be, you gotta look harder, my friend. You gotta put in the work, and I promise you, if you put in the work, you look back 12 months from now, you'll be like, holy Eric was right. Company design for Pricer, we will look into it. We have a bunch of systems and bots making informed work for us, I'll look into it. Yeah, listen, it's not gonna be cheap to get made. Um, but it's possible, you know, these companies are building repricers left and right. I've spent some time in some of them. I don't, they're, they're tough. Listen, I don't want to, I'm not going to talk trash about anybody's repricer because I'm sure they spent a lot of time putting effort into building it. But from someone who sells on Amazon for a living, a lot of repricers lack the necessary metrics that I want to see in order to grow my Amazon business. Kaiser Sultan said, what if Amazon don't accept invoice or they think it's authentic or inauthentic? It is risky to get your account suspended. No, because you wouldn't even be able to list it. If they don't accept your invoice, you can't get approved for the category, so you're not even gonna be able to list the product for them to even look at it and see that it's inauthentic. And it wouldn't be inauthentic because you bought it from a reputable distributor. Going full-time next year on Amazon, congratulations. It's Lakeem. It is Lakeem, congratulations on that. Heard I can open up a 401k with the business and do a match. Do you do this? If so, how do you go about doing it? No, we do not do this currently, and I like that you brought that up because this is something we've been looking into, and it is an option. You can open up a 401k and, and have your own business match um, what you put in that 401k. You just have to pay yourself a salary um, and become an employee of your business, um, which is perfectly fine. That's that's how a lot of businesses operate. Um, but we currently are not doing this, but this is something we are looking into as well. So if I get an update, I'll let you know. Uh, it is lucky. 13.5 minute minimum wage. Yeah, then pay him, pay him 14. Isaac, start off if 13.5 is minimum wage in Washington, start him off at 14. You gotta value your employees. One of the best decisions, I don't know how, I learned so much from Sebastian. Sebastian teaches me so much. I'm so grateful to have that guy in my life. I don't know where he learned it from or what, but he's taught me so much about business. And, and one thing he taught me early on is pay your employees well because they are the ones who take care of your business. Like when Sebastian, Ted and myself were on that flea market or when Sebastian went to Indiana last week or I went to Texas a couple months ago or when we go to Vegas together, all three of us and we're gone for the week, like who takes care of our business? Our employees take care of our business. Your employees will take care of your business when you're out spending the day with the family or you have a new baby and you have to stay home for three or four weeks um, to bond with that baby, like you step away and they they step up and take care of your business. So I always encourage, pay your employees well. Pay your employees well. Definitely. So if 13.5 is minimum wage in Washington, bump it up. Start at 14. Go to 15. And then if they don't work, fire them. Get somebody else. Someone's willing to work for that paycheck. So Tree City Sports Car said, I pay my buyers 10% of what they spend. Is that fair? In a perfect world, that is fair but the world is not perfect. And the reason why this is not the optimal way to be uh, paying your buyers is because if you're paying them 10% based on what they spend, how much of that becomes excess inventory? How much of that becomes stranded inventory? How much of that have did you have to sell for a loss? Um, our bonus structure for our procurement team, sourcing employees, Jamie University just asked, our bonus structure is we pay them a salary, and then we give them quarterly bonuses based on their profits. So let's say, um, let's say 30 or what is it? How many, 120 days are in a quarter, right? So let's say 
120 days, we want them to profit, let's say, $2 million in 100 and 120 days. So let's say quarter four, which we're in right now, right? We want their profit to be $2 million collectively as a team, right? Because this is a team effort here. So we have four buyers. If they break that 2 million mark, then they get a bonus, right? That's where the bonus starts. So if they don't break 2 million in profit, so let's say for you, let's say in the next quarter, you want to do $100,000 in profit. If your buyers break that $100,000 in profit, then they get a commission. And we have a, a structured commission where it goes up by percentages, right? So let's say they do $101,000 in profit, right? Then they get 10% of whatever's over that profit. And then if they get 102, they get 10% of whatever's over that. They get 103, they get 140, they get 10% of that $40,000, which is $4,000. That's a nice chunk of change for a quarter as a bonus. You get four of those a year, your buyer's making an extra 16 grand every single year. So it's structured based on profit. What the What's the minimum profit you want for that quarter? And it changes every quarter. And we do the same for our employees downstairs, our production. One of the reasons, so about 10% of our inventory is excess inventory, meaning it hasn't sold in, you know, 90 plus days or it's, we're losing money on it. I don't want to pay my buyers for inventory that they purchased that's been sitting in Amazon for six months. I personally don't want to pay my buyers for that um, because that's a, if you ask me, that's a poor purchase that they shouldn't be getting paid for. They should be getting paid for making the company money, not purchasing inventory that we're selling at a loss right now. So that's why I think incentives should be profit based and not, uh, purchase based. Why does that one buyer produce so much more? Any idea? Yeah, she's just a savage, James. She used to operate. She, first of all, she lived in Russia or, until she was maybe early 20s um and she she was like a manager of a, a multi-store cell phone accessory location and she just gets amazon you know i trained her sebastian trained her and then she just ran and did her thing and uh she's actually been working from from home too for the past eight months and she's crushing it She's crushing it. She just really knows she has an eye for good products. And she just can really, like, her her margins are higher. Her profit dollars are higher. Um, her sales, her orders, and her cart are higher. She just really knows what she's doing. She's been a blessing for her company. Definitely a blessing. Do we need a warehouse to start wholesale, or can we do basement at the beginning? You could definitely do a basement at the beginning. You could set up a UPS box. Um, you could source from local distributors. So we started our business in a basement. We were in a basement for probably the first eight or nine months. And in that in that basement, we did close to a million dollars in sales out of that basement. So you do not. A warehouse to start is not a requirement, but to scale, it's a requirement. Or you could also use prep centers. Prep centers are an option as well. You absolutely can use prep centers. Promote Eric as a supplier. Yeah, go check out Empire Distri Distribution USA, everybody. I've never done business with him. He just asked if he could self-promote. There he is. Why don't we bring him on? Why don't you request to be in the live here? Let's chat. Empire Distributors Distribution USA. Request to be in the live. Shameless plug. Here he is. Hello? Hey, what's up, my friend? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself, man? Good, working here. Nice. I'm inventory. Nice. So you own a distribution company? Yes. Uh, I mean, we are just starting out. Okay. Where are you located? Uh, we are in Los Angeles. Okay, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Perfect. So you sell products to... Is there any restrictions with e-commerce sellers or you're pretty open to working no, with e-commerce sellers? No, we are mostly concentrated in, on e-commerce sellers. So we are looking uh, to source the products that are good for e-com people. Okay. Um, you, got a, you got a website that people in the live can check out real quick? Yes, it's Empire Distribution USA, the username.com. We have it in our bio. But, um, but yeah, man, let's connect and we appreciate your time and tell your partner over there, I appreciate the love. And if you got any questions, just send them my way and hopefully some people reach out to you. Yeah, thank you. Also, we provide like a, we can ship it direct to FBA. So if people, they are East Coast people, 
we can label it for them and ship it to FBA and Polybag. I mean, everything, full service. And Eric, awesome. for the for the people watching, we are we're thinking about doing a referral program. So uh, the more the more buyers sign up, we're we're gonna have a referral program very soon uh, to provide first come first serve type of deal. So uh, for anyone watching, we're we're uh, starting right now, but we moved about six seven pallets so far this week. Uh, looking to grow and just following your paths, brother. Nice, man. Nice, bro. Keep up the hustle, my friends. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you too. All right, stay lit. Look at that right there. Somebody reach out to. I heard a bunch of people were just asking um, who they could reach out to for wholesalers and distributors. There's a company. I personally never work with them, but I'm always willing to give someone a shot. So hopefully they can help someone out, especially if you're in the L.A. area. If you're in that area, it's a huge opportunity. Got a relationship with two two young guys ready to put in that work, hustle. I'm 15 doing RA, dope, like that. First year 12K so far, huge. Hopefully one day I can move to wholesale. Awesome. Love your headspace there. Love the hustle and appreciate your all your content. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Watch this kid, Amazon. And shout out to you too, man. Taking initiative at a young age, man. I respect the out of that. So keep doing your thing. You're going to look back in a couple of years. And you're going to be like, thank God I started this young. Oh, so back to the orders. Levi said, who reviews those orders? You or Sebastian, or do you have an office manager that reviews these orders that they make? No, I review them. I review Sebastian probably reviews 20% of them and I review the other 80%. Uh, it's just, it's tough to get someone in the, you know, we've been doing this for seven years. It's tough. Like I could literally just look at a product. It takes me seven seconds. Just look at a listing. Know if I want to buy it or not. You know, sometimes I got to spend 10 seconds, but literally I just look at a product and, and I just look at our user interface and I look at the product or the profit and I look at the brand and I just know like, this is a good buy. This is a bad buy. Can I apply your learnings to Amazon in Australia? Absolutely, Juicy Apple goodness. Um, right now, currently, in East Sellers RI, which is our Amazon course, we have a seller from Italy. We have sellers from United Kingdom. We have sellers from Mexico, Canada, literally sellers all over the world growing their sales in, in our Amazon course. So whether Australia will work too, it's universal. Can I do an internship with your buyer? <laughs> Who's that? Kalia. Um, unfortunately, right now, we're, we don't have any openings for internships. A, because COVID is super crazy and we just don't want to have anybody in-house. But B, we just don't have any openings. But that's a shout out to you for asking. You don't know unless you ask. Um... Have you ever been shut down for a decent amount of time? Yeah, we've been shut down for a few days. Yeah, it's scary. So hope you're making some money grinding. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for spending this time with me. It's crushing the clock out here. Hope everybody stays safe, mask up, stay grateful, and stay lit. Appreciate you.